I'm Karen and I'm a gallery assistant here at Nottingham Contemporary. Um, for starters, I just want to talk a little bit about the building and its development. Um, Nottingham Contemporary um, Gallery has been here for about 13 years and it was a new build specifically designed to house contemporary art. It was designed by the architects um, Caruso St John, who are London based and who won the competition to find the best design for this building. It's built on a really difficult bit of land. It's built on top of a cliff, in fact, and um, it's actually three stories deep. Um, the first, the top story here is where the four galleries are, but there are two, two stories further down that house meeting spaces, um, a large events room and a cafe and so on. Um, although we talk about it as Nottingham Contemporary Gallery, in fact, it's an arts centre, really, um, where on the bottom floor we can, um, we can have events such as films, conferences, uh, musical events, performance arts and so on, um, as well as community activities like weddings and so on. The building, uh, we're in the lace market area of Nottingham and the architects were um, quite careful to, in, uh, to in, in, include elements of uh, Nottingham's history in here. So on the green panels here at the front, if you look closely, you can see um, a lace design. And that was a pattern of lace that was discovered in a time capsule that had been buried near St. Peter's Church just down the road. And um, of course, it highlights Nottingham's history as a center of lace making. Um, the building itself, the architects wanted it to be in keeping with the old, um, the old um, lace warehouses that are just up the road in the lace market. Um, um, the gallery is in an area of Nottingham called Wheat Bay Cross, which is the very earliest part of Nottingham. The original Saxon village was in this bit of Nottingham. And the weekday cross, which is just, just past the building out here, has been there since um, certainly Saxon times. The Vikings and um, the Normans used it as a marketplace. And it was also a place of recreation from very early on. Um, it was where the earliest goose fairs were held. Uh, people from Nottingham um, all know about the goose fair and that was held here and for most people it was the only opportunity they had for a day's holiday. They had Christmas and Easter and so on but those were they tended to take place in church with a bit of feasting afterwards. So this has always been a place of play and I'm just going to show you a picture by Peter Bruegel the Elder which is the earliest example in, in the Western canon that we have of an artist painting children at play. Peter Bruegel was the first Western artist to paint the lives of ordinary people. And um, particularly in this instance, children at play. And what struck me about it is that um, looking at the children in Bruegel's picture, um, and thinking about what happens in this space um, during the weekends and school holidays is that children's play doesn't change really. So um, the children rolling about on barrels, for example, in Bruegel's picture um, is an identical picture of what children do on the large green ball um, in our gallery on a weekend. So nothing changes. Play is ubiquitous. It's you, all children play. Um, across history and in all um, societies. And Children's Bay, you can actually track, track a child's development um, through the development of play. So the basic, simplest kind of play is sensory, where people, where children, where babies are finding where their bodies begin and end and what they're capable of doing. Um, they would then move on to exploring their environments in movement and from there, they develop um, the skills of pretend play, learning about how other people in their community do things, and role play. Later on, they develop key skill, you know, core skills. So um, a baby will happily entertain itself banging saucepan lids with a, um, a wooden spoon. 
but by the time that baby is 10 years old, she's maybe knocking out chopsticks on the piano. And by the time she's 16 or 17, she's playing Mozart. And indeed, she may, in a few years, turn out to be the next Mozart. Who knows? So people develop um, their own skills at their own pace. Um, but we all continue to play, and we play throughout our lives. We don't always call it that because we think of play as being children's stuff. Um, but whenever we are making a fancy celebration cake, or when we are joining our mates in a five-a-side football match, or when we are playing our little um, playlists on our little play gadgets, we are indulging in play. And it's the thing that marks us out as human that we do. That's essential to our ability to create communities. We do things together. And just as you can track child development through play, you can also track the, there's a similar trajectory for the development of the arts, whether that be performing arts, um, the decorative arts or uh, music or whatever. So if we go back to the earliest um, cave paintings um, from up to sort of 25,000 years ago, um, some of the earliest ones are marks made by people's fingers, fingers and hands. Um, and that again brings to mind this work in progress by Laura Eldred, um, where, which is called Reach, which um, invites people to make a mark on the wall here using gold leaf um, at the point, the highest point that they can reach. And by the end of this exhibition, um, we will have a collective of all those. Um, so that, that's a work in progress. Um, again, throughout history, as, as um, the arts have developed, um, we find evidence of um, different cultures playing at different times. So here's a picture of Queen Nefertiti uh, playing a game of Senate, which is very similar to, um, to chess by the looks of it. And um, Nefertiti, that's in her tomb in the Valley of the Queens in Luxor, Egypt. And this goes back to about 1300 BC or thereabouts, so a long time. So we've gone from over 20,000 years or so, we've gone from uh, finger marks to this. And then we hit the Renaissance and we've got our Bruegel. And um, so it continues. So you can say art's a rarefied form of play. Um, and we revere those who we uh, feel are, um, are best at it, whether they be sports people, artists, actors, or whatever. And artists as well do create play uh, materials. So here's a picture of a um, sculpture by Picasso, which is in a public square in um, Chicago, and um, it was designed as a sculpture. It was completed not long before Picasso died, and um, it's about 50 foot tall. And when it was unveiled, local children, families, so on, um, immediately started using it as a playground for climbing on and local young skateboarders came and used it as well. So the council decided um, they'd let them. And now people, that's where people go for a day out um, with the kids in Chicago. Mm -hmm.